Do we have free will, or is free will a myth? This is mainly a philosophical question, the answer to which gets at the heart of who and what we are. There are two views of the nature of the human mind, naturalistic and supernaturalistic. Each of these results in an opposite view about free will. The conclusion on free will of the naturalistic view is that free will does not really exist. The conclusion on free will of the supernaturalistic view is that free will does exist. These two views are opposite philosophical views. They are really views about who and what we are. According to the naturalistic view, the human mind is just a function of our brain. This reduces the mind to a totally biological effect, resulting from the firing of neurons, leaving no room for free will. In this view, the mind is nothing more than a complex computer program. This program is so complex that it produces the illusion of free will. Despite producing the illusion of free will, the mind is seen as just a result of pre-programmed responses. Furthermore, consciousness is seen as nothing but a useless side effect, a brain process. The naturalistic view sees the mind as just a function of the brain that ceases to exist when the brain dies, eliminating any possibility of life after death. According to the supernatural view, the human mind is more than a function of the brain, but results from the presence of a spiritual component commonly called a soul. It is this soul that is the controlling agent of the brain. Not only does this allow for free will, but to accept the existence of free will, one logically has to conclude that the mind is more than a function of the brain. Thus, the mind must be a supernatural part of our being. Just in this view, the mind is not just a function of the brain. It can exist independent of the brain and survives the death of the brain, thus allowing for the possibility of life after death. While one can accept the existence of free will in the naturalistic mind, this is a logically inconsistent view. The simple fact is that logically acceptance of free will requires acceptance of a supernatural view of the human mind. At first glance, it would seem that neurology would be able to test the two different views, but that is not the case. One reason is that most, if not all, neurological studies do not even consider the possibility of a supernatural mind. This means experiments are designed and results interpreted only from a naturalistic point of view. However, the real problem is that both views are philosophical rather than scientific. As a result, both views are sufficiently flexible so as to be able to interpret any observation in a manner consistent with its philosophical starting point. For example, the naturalistic view can interpret free will as an illusion resulting from the brain's complexity, while the supernatural view can interpret relationships between the brain and mental activity as being a result of soul-brain interaction. As a result, this question cannot be answered scientifically, but will remain an entirely philosophical question. Now, it turns out that quantum mechanics provides scientific support for a supernatural view of the mind. Particle wave duality effectively destroys the materialistic view of the world on which the naturalistic view is based. And the uncertainty principle effectively destroys the deterministic view of the world on which the naturalistic view is based. Furthermore, recent neurological studies have shown that the synapses of the brain require quantum tunneling on demand to work. The fact that these synapses need to fire when the mind wants them to shows that the mind is the controlling agent of the quantum tunneling. This suggests that the mind is indeed separate from the brain. If the mind were part of the brain, it would be dependent on the quantum tunneling to work and could not be the controlling agent. 